Mr. Rucker with a fight nerd checking in with Chael Sonnen. Chael, tell us a little bit about your last minute opponent change. I know you've talked about it a million times today. No, that's all right. Uh, it's Michael Bisping. We switched from uh, Mark Munoz to uh, to Michael. Uh, he was on the card anyway. He had a, a different opponent. They just did a little a little cross matchmaking, but same same guys on the same card. What would it mean to uh, take away from Dan Henderson and give the most spectacular finish to Dan Hen uh, of Michael Bisping on the upcoming match? Well, you know, on anybody, uh, you know, that's really exciting when you can be part of that. You know, Dan Henderson had a, a highlight real moment that'll be remembered and, uh, and will live on long after his career, so good for him. If you can be part of stuff like that, uh, that's great. If and when you clear through the division, uh, if Dan Henderson does decide to move down to middleweight, I know you've talked about not having problems uh, fighting friends in the past. What do you think about a uh, match with Dan? Well, you know, Dan's more than a friend. It's a little bit different. You're asking me to fight one of my coaches. You know, you're asking me to fight a guy uh, who helped to train me, uh, who helped to teach me what I know. That's a significant difference than fighting uh, a friend. You're talking about a a student versus a master type situation and uh, you know I, I had a lot of other help but uh, I was with Dan for a lot of years and uh, I, I think that's more than they could ask of anybody. And uh, you know shortly after watching uh, Yushinakami's uh, last fight I knew you guys did a lot of work together uh, what do you think happened in the match, and uh, did the game plan just not come through that you guys worked on? Well, you know, he uh, he didn't go out and get in a fight, and uh, that's not meant to be an insult. That's just as clear as I know how to talk. Uh, Yushin and I have had this talk face-to-face. -face. You know, when you get in there with any opponent, you got to go in there and fight. And, and Anderson is the master of not having to fight. He, he's the master of backing you down early, letting the press do his bidding for him. Uh, letting this mystique get in the way. And if you go out and you stand in front of him, you know, if you're as talented as Vitor Belfort, who uh, is extremely talented, but you just stand there, you get knocked out. If you're as talented as Yushin Okami, but you just stand there, you know, one guy's standing and one guy's fighting, this isn't, uh, you don't exactly have to put on your Colombo rain jacket to figure out who's going to win. One of their favorite uh, videos floating around our office is definitely your interviews you've done with Michael Landsberg on Off the Record. What can you tell us about that situation and uh, where things are at with you guys? Well, you know, I talked to Landsberg as early as today. There was never any hard feelings with Landsberg. I never regretted going on his show. But I think I make a pretty fair point when I say somebody invites me into their show, they are the host, I am their guest. And Landsberg's rebuttal was, yeah, I get that argument, but I've seen some of your interviews and everybody kisses up to you, everybody's nice to you. It's like, well, Landsberg, let's take that theory and apply it to real life. Let's say we live in the same neighborhood. You invite me over to your house. I come over, I bring a nice dessert for everybody to share. You hit me in the face with a frying pan. I say, well, what'd you do that for? You say, well, I saw you at Bill and Kathy's house last week and they were so nice to you. You know, I thought I'd try something different. I go, well, Wait a minute, you're the host, I'm your guest. You know, if you didn't want me here, don't invite me here. But if you do want me and I do show, uh, you know, I fight for a living. I don't I don't come in front of the media or the cameras to, to fight or bicker. I don't go home to fight or bicker. Uh, you know, I, I, I get enough of that in the day. So I think I made a pretty fair point, and I think he saw my side. And uh, even if he didn't, I'll, I'll tell you, he's a, he's a pretty good guy. I've got to know him a little bit, and I consider him a friend. Fantastic. And, uh, you know, Michael Bisping's talked a lot about his improved jiu-jitsu game. Do you think that's going to be a bit of a factor on Saturday? Well, you know, uh, probably, yeah. I, I mean, if I want him down, he's going down. You know, he, he's, he's a British fighter. I think he's a very tough guy. But I... Uh, I'm a Division One All-American. I've been doing this since I was nine years old. I've won two national championships. I was an alternate for the Olympic team. I will take him down anytime I please. Fantastic. Did you get a chance to uh, check out Chicago at all and do anything while you're here? Very little, but what I've seen, it's been very impressive. I've spent some time in New York City, which uh, is comparative. But the people of Chicago are so much nicer, as simply as traffic. You don't hear these horns honking and the hustle and the bustle. You try to sleep at night, you can sleep. You know, you go to New York, it keeps you up because they're honking so much. I have a great time in New York. This isn't my way to vent some kind of frustration. But I, I make the comparison because both the cities are so impressive. They're so absolutely massive. The buildings are so huge. The streets are so busy. The people are everywhere. 
uh, I, I've had the opportunity to go to Tokyo, and uh, that's the biggest city in the world. And, uh, you know, it's great. I love Tokyo. I love New York. I love Chicago. I'm really fortunate to get to come out, check the place out. Any messages for your fans before your fight on Saturday? No, listen, the, fan, the fans know the deal, and it goes like this right here. When you're the best fighter in the world today, they got a name for you. They don't call you a great fighter. They call you Chael's son and beat me if you can.